Hi, this is Darren Lyle. Let's go ahead and keep working on our character rig. We've done the foot and the knee controls. Let's work on the fingers here. Let's turn on the names of these fingers. So under the armature panel, I'm gonna come over here and turn on names so I can see what the names of the bones are. What I'd like to do is set up a constraint system so that we don't have to animate each finger every time we want, uh, excuse me, each bone every time we want a finger to bend. So I wouldn't want to have to come in here and bend this, and then bend this, and then bend this. So I'd want a way to just do that all at once. So I'm going to press Alt-R to clear the rotation there. So once again, I'm going to use the copy rotation constraint. I'm going to select index 2 here. And then I'm going to shift select index 3. And come over here to the bone constraints panel. Add a constraint. And let's choose copy rotation. Just like before, I'm going to change the local space, the space to local. I'll turn off Y and Z. And of course I need to set a target, now don't I? So I'm going to choose armature, and I'll choose index, index 2 here. So now if I select index 2 and rotate this, I should get a bend with index 3 as well. So let's do that again for index 1, index 1, shift select index 2. And let's once again add a copy rotation. We'll select armature, uh, index one, local space, and turn off Y and Z. And now if we select index one here and rotate it, we should get a nice bend for the whole finger. Now one thing I'd like to do here, and we could leave it like this of course, but if you bend this back too far, it's going to look kind of crazy. That's going to hurt. So what we can do is limit the rotation of that bone when it's bending backwards. So I'm going to select index 2 and add a limit rotation constraint. We're going to limit it in the X change this to local space. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to move, I'm going to rotate this finger back till right about, I don't know, right about here, let's say. And then I'm going to adjust the minimum here, the minimum under limit X, until it looks about right. So it probably looks, pre it looks pretty good right about there. So for me, minus 20. That looks pretty good. Now, no matter how far I bend that finger back, it's only going to ever bend that far back, right? It won't curl all the way back. All right, so I'm gonna clear that rotation there with Alt-R. Now, I want to take a look at it going forward. So if I roll this forward now, or excuse me, into the hand, I guess, I don't know. If I roll that forward now, and my finger bends about that far, now I want to see set the maximum for how much it will curl in. So if I increase the maximum, let's say it's going to curl in, I don't know, maximum of a... 60 there. Okay, so now when we bend it out and in, we will never rotate more than it should be. So that looks pretty good. All right, so I'm going to select everything, press Alt R to clear the rotations. And of course, we do this for all the other fingers. Another place where we could give ourselves a little bit more control when we animate is here in the hips. Right now, if I rotate the hips, it'll just 
go like that. And the rotation is here at the crotch, which we don't really want that. What I'd like to do is have the rotation of the hips be up here at the, at the tip of this bone. So what let's do is let's go ahead and create a new bone here, a hips bone, and we'll set that up to rotate at this point. So I'm going to go back to edit mode here and select this bone. And I'm going to duplicate it with shift D. And there it is. I'm going to name that bone. We'll call it hips control, T C T R L. And I'm going to come over here into the, well, near the side here. And what I want to do is rotate this bone 180 degrees. So I'm going to hold the control key down and click and drag so it snaps right there. So now this bone will rotate at this joint now. And we now need to parent this, the hips and the legs to that bone. So I'm going to select the hips bone, shift select the hips control bone, and press control P and keep offset. So now if we go back to pose mode and select that hips control bone, now when we rotate that bone, it will rotate at that point. Now I don't, it's hard to see here now because I don't have the other leg, but if I push this down here a bit and then rotate this, you can kind of see that it's going to rotate from that point. Now one thing that gives us the ability to do that kind of hula, hula dance hip movement is that when we bend at the hip, we can keep our uh, spine straight up and down. So one way to do that is to select this spine one bone and come over here to this bones panel and under the relations panel turn off inherit rotation. So if I turn that off and come back to that hips control now when I turn that hip you can see it gives it that kind of hula dance kind of thing and even though we have inherent rotation turned off, if we move that bone, we can still come in and move that spine bone as well, right? So you still have con control over that. I'm going to go ahead and press Alt-R and Alt-G. And while we're turning off inherent rotation, we might as well do it up here for the head as well. If we select the head, and turn off inherent rotation here. Then when we rotate the spine bone here, we get this kind of, um, we kind of keep the head perpendicular to the floor now. So that's kind of cool when you're rotating the character, he kind of stays upright, which is kind of the way we work, I think. If we're walking or running and looking at a target, we tend to keep our head pointed at that, at that spot. Okay. Um, in addition, we could, let's see, we could also turn off inherent rotation for the arms here. So let's turn those off for the upper arms. Right. Oops, I turned off inherent scale. Here we go. There we go. And now when we move or rotate this spine bone, you can see that his arms stay parallel to, to the ground and the head stays perpendicular. So it's kind of a nice realistic movement that you can get there. So that's kind of a nice thing to have when you're animating. Well, that's the fingers, the hips, and the inherent rotation tools. I hope that's been helpful. I'm going to go ahead and finish up my rig here, and then in the next video we'll talk about creating control objects, which will help us animate without accidentally selecting a bone and destroying the rig. So hope to see you then. Thanks for watching.